Welcome to this fifth video in the series of our casting with Green Sand versus Lost Foam. These videos go with the long article on the Flowering Elbow website about the same subject. Now we've got the foam pattern in this fairly shoddy plywood box and we're packing it round with loose, just unbonded, normal dry sand. The more the sand can roll over each other, the better, um, because when it comes to do what I'm doing now, which is trying to vibrate the sand into all the little nooks and crannies in the pattern, uh, it'll move better. Because I haven't got that much sand that's nice and dry like this, I'm placing these bean cans and other tubes over the risers and then filling around with sand. Uh, similarly the bricks you can see in there, they're there because I didn't have that much sand. So let's melt some aluminium. Uh, as usual preheating the scraps on top on the exhaust, placing them in. We won't go through all this, don't worry. So once we've got a bunch, we're de-drossing. You can see the crucible is really full here. That's because it barely has enough to fill this mould. And what I really want is the aluminium, the liquid aluminium, to come all the way up the risers, which will give it some pressure, which should improve the quality of the casting. Getting it out with this tool is always a bit tricky, especially when it's super full like it is. Uh, just as a side note, I've got steel toe capped safety trainery things on. Uh, could be better, Could should really have leather boots, which is what I normally wear. Now this is the first casting that I did in the foam of the gantry end plates. It's quite big. You'll notice no steam coming out until now of the risers and then with a lot of pressure which indicates to me that the exhaust gases didn't really have anywhere to go building up a lot of pressure and in fact later on I realised it actually blew one of the risers off and aluminium melted somehow through the sand to the side wall of the plywood. Some issues down in that corner where aluminium is just like totally leaked out everywhere. That corner, basically everywhere you can imagine. I'll be surprised if that's successful. So obviously pleased. Okay, so we're on to the second foam gantry end plate casting and this time I'm pre-melting holes in the risers so they don't have to be melted before gas can actually go out of them which I guess is the whole point of risers so hopefully this will work a bit better same deal melting de-drossing blah blah this time you may notice I'm also trying to have a more controlled slower feed rate which I've read makes for stronger castings hopefully less defects you may have noticed then steam came straight out of the riser so that pre-melting really did help uh, it's difficult to see at some points with the amount of smoke oh, and uh, <laughs> I don't know how I managed to be so clumsy with my pouring but most of it went in, a small blob went on the floor. Now, it just goes to show why it's really important to pour over a surface that's not concrete. Here is the first casting. Um, you can notice along here there's some interesting sort of ridges um, and this area is quite proud uh, seems like that's where it blew up and I've milled out down here it was the same down there uh, I've done a bit of milling around here just to clean it up a bit 
Um, what else is there to say? There's a little bit of shoddiness here. That's where I didn't probably vibrate the sand fully into the corner. Apart from that, that was the first one. The surface finish, not ideal, but okay. That's been like pressure washed. Now then, let's have a look at the second one, which is the more of a fresh casting. It's still got sort of the blackness on it. I haven't cut the risers off. So this is how this turned out. There's bits like that that haven't chipped out yet of plaster. Um, really pressure washing is the way to go with that. But in general, I'm quite pleased. Um, obviously it needs tidying up a little bit and some milling. But all in all, oh and like the other one, sand didn't fill this area here so when it was in the in the sand it was that way round which made it quite hard to fill this corner here with sand but I'm hoping that will just lever off as there's a layer of plaster you can see a glass reinforced tape I used so there's a layer of plaster down there so with a little bit of machining along here I think which is the only place that it's stuck I should be able to wedge all this out there's a layer of plaster between it and the main casting so yeah I've got two gantry end plates on my hands here I think Thanks for watching guys and or reading along with the article on the Flowering Elbow blog. Uh, there's loads more details there if you're into reading about the geekery and I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video. Apart from that, you may want to subscribe if you found that interesting and go check out our Facebook page that's Flowering Elbow on Facebook. There you'll see exciting pictures and videos of this giant experimental CNC machine that we're building. So see you next time. Thanks for watching.